This is the Canon AF35ML from 1981. It is the second in a series of Canon's autofocus compact cameras called the Autoboy SureShot. Uh, the first one came out two years prior to this one in 1979. I like this one particularly because it's really sleek and uh, elegant. In fact, it won a good design award here in Japan. And uh, here are two things that I'd like to share with you about why it's a pretty awesome piece of technology. First thing is not really nice. <laughs> the fact of the matter is it's very, very noisy. Here, let me demonstrate. The second point is it has this nice little four layer logo here called the CAFS or the Canon Autofocus System. Unlike its earlier uh, version, the Canon AF35, uh, which used what is known as uh, active uh, triangulation or active focusing, whereby it would send out an IR or an infra infrared beam, uh, determine how far, it, how long it takes to come back and, and, and determine how far away the subject is and therefore focus the lens accordingly. This one uses uh, a different piece of technology called a charged coupling device. Now, to make a long explanation and one that I might bungle uh, short, um, you can notice that there's two windows here. Those two windows lead to two sensors inside here, which are used to compare. One is, up, uh, according to the line of sight, right, it's situated just above the lens, and therefore it can sort of determine what you should see and what should be projected onto the film. And the other uses um, effectively a mirror that de tries to determine how far away the subject is by moving. And when it does, it can quickly determine if the image that it's seeing is the same one here by effectively comparing the views or the, the, the signals that are recorded on the charge coupling device. This is what's known as passive triangulation, and Canon was really m proud of it because it claimed that uh, you could take much better and much sharper photos by using this piece of technology. It turns out CCDs were not only used for determining focus, but actually for registering digital cameras and uh, digital waveforms uh, in the years to come. So those are two little things about this particular camera. Um, if you find it in a uh, junkyard, it might, uh, might be a little bit um, worth your while to try out.